How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be breaking down the science behind the quickness and just the overall incredible acceleration power behind a majority of modern electric vehicles. Now before we do get into today's video definitely be sure to go down there like this video subscribe click the bell to turn on post notifications all that even you know comment down below helps me out a ton in the algorithm as a smaller YouTuber and I really appreciate all your support. And also if I missed anything in this video or if I said anything wrong, definitely be sure to let me know down in the comments. I respond to most comments and uh, it's good to have a nice refreshing like uh, civil discussion here on YouTube. But anyways, getting into today's video, we are gonna talk about the very unorthodox way that most electric vehicles are so fast. So much like I saw in the new Volvo SUV that I did a review on not too long ago that was fully electric, most non-performance or like even SUV uh, EVs nowadays that are coming out have a zero to 60 mile per hour acceleration time less than five seconds, which is honestly a very respectable uh, factor in their performance. And also some of the EVs that are more performance oriented like a Tesla Model S or like the Model S Plaid if you want to really go extreme or you know that far uh, into the performance world with EVs pretty much every single EV has a ridiculous amount of acceleration and to be honest it really just comes down to one simple factor about their drivetrain and most of you may already know this so before i actually show you a diagram uh, talking about the drivetrain of an electric vehicle i'm actually going to show you a couple drivetrains from uh, internal combustion engine vehicles or basically you know gasoline powered vehicles so literally all i'm doing is going on google images i searched up diagram of car drivetrain and you can see right here, this is a standard rear wheel drive car. And you can tell because the engine is in the front of the vehicle and it is connected to a transmission, which has different gears in it. If it's a manual or automatic, it does depend. Uh, there, there's definitely things in the internals that uh, change, like an automatic has a torque converter and a couple other things, but we're not gonna get into that for today's video. Inside an actual internal combustion engine, you have either a singular camshaft or multiple camshafts, depending upon what engine it is, and you have a singular uh, crankshaft located on the bottom portion of the engine. Now that crankshaft is what ma majorly like basically connects the power that is getting made from the uh, little explosions happening inside your engine into the transmission. And that power moves through the transmission and into the drive shaft. Drive shaft eventually goes to a rear in this rear wheel drive uh, you know, case and just a regular standard rear wheel drive vehicle. And the gears within the rear basically turn the rear axle and your power uh, gets through either one rear wheel or actually both rear wheels if you have a limited slip differential. Now moving over to a diagram of an EV drivetrain, you can see here that it's a much, much different. So basically all you have in a, an electric vehicle is a cooling system, a converter, your actual electric motor, and then a bunch of batteries that are normally found within the middle of the two axles of the vehicle, if it's a you know two axle or four wheel uh, vehicle. And that's mainly just to evenly distribute weight across the vehicle because these batteries are extremely heavy. And that's also the main component that make EV slow is their weight and just their bulkiness. Uh, and that's mainly due to those uh, batteries. And the main difference between this EV drivetrain and a regular internal combustion engine vehicle drivetrain is that there's no there's no transmission, there's no gears. The, it's basically just the engine is connected to the axles and uh, that's it. Like and this right here you can tell is a front wheel drive EV because there's no uh, axle or anything in, in the rear it doesn't look like. So this is kind of a bad example but just to kind of Give you a direct comparison here is a diagram of a front wheel drive internal combustion engine drivetrain you basically have your internal combustion engine right there connected to a trans axle which is this weird mix between the transmission and an axle and then that is connected to your half shaft and then this is like just delivering a power to one wheel and here is actually the internals of the of a transaxle. Again, I can make a whole nother video talking about how a transaxle is different than a transmission, but I'm not really going to get into it uh, today. Now that's all fine and dandy, but 
you might still be saying like, hey, you know, you, didn't, you haven't really answered anything like how, like physically how are EVs faster then if they just directly transmit that power from the engine right to the wheels. Well, that's mainly because you're getting no mechanical loss that you actually get when you're dealing with an actual, you know, transmission, a drive shaft and a rear. For example, a lot of times when you search up specs or, you know, power specs or anything of, of a vehicle, you'll actually get two different numbers for BHP as well as WHP. And basically what those two acronyms stand for is brake horsepower and wheel horsepower. So brake horsepower basically just means, you know, a manufacturer is hooking up the engine by itself to a dyno and just the power that it makes at the, at the crank that is its brake horsepower. And I believe you lose anywhere between 15 to 25% of that power when it is actually translated to wheel horsepower. I'll have the actual conversion up on the screen right now, edited in, but off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure it's between 15 to 25% of that power. Now, moving on to torque curves, as you can see right in front of you, you have a very standard uh, torque curve and power curve that you can find on a dyno sheet from an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, if you don't know what a dyno sheet is, a dyno is basically what I was just talking about before. Uh, you hook a car up to it and you run it. And as the RPMs increase, the power output actually increases for internal combustion engine vehicles. And that's oftentimes when you're also looking up specs for vehicles, you will see, for example, a peak for this one, 280 horsepower at 5,500 RPMs and 230 something foot pounds of torque at 3,500 RPMs. You're not making that power at uh, idle or at 1,000 RPMs. And that's just, you know, physically impossible with an internal combustion engine. Now looking at the uh, torque curve from, or I guess torque delivery from an, an EV, you can see that hypothetically, if this electric vehicle made a thousand uh, newton meters, I guess, of torque. It's just, it's a linear line. So basically, if you've ever had an RC car growing up, you know that as soon as you press go, it just, it's full out, you know, all power. And that's pretty much how an electric vehicle works. An electric vehicle is basically just a larger RC car. So when you actually press your gas pedal, or I shouldn't even call it a gas pedal, but your accelerator pedal, if you have that pedal down maybe 10%, you are getting 10% of the power of that, you know, electric motor. Now, if you just floor the electric vehicle, you are getting 100% of that electric motor's power instantaneously. And a lot of you who might have some experience with cars may think to yourself, well, that's weird because not a lot of electric vehicles really struggle that much with traction. And honestly, that's correct. And you don't really see a lot of electric vehicles coming from factory with 275 rear tires or 305s or anything crazy like that. But what I believe, and this is just kind of like my own personal opinion, and I'm sure there's studies to potentially back this or disprove this. So let me know if I'm wrong down in the comments below. But what I believe you get as far as traction is concerned from an EV is the same phenomenon as a Jeep Trackhawk compared to a Hellcat. So if you don't know this already, a Jeep Trackhawk and a Hellcat uh, basically share pretty much the same drivetrain. I think the transmissions are, might be different, but a Jeep Trackhawk a lot of times can actually beat the Hellcat off the line from a dig simply because of its heavier weight. Now, I'm not saying that Trackhawks are faster than Hellcats, and I'm not saying that Hellcats are faster than Trackhawks because there's plenty of street races and uh, 1320 video you know, footage that can kind of make an argument for both sides of that debate. So we're not even going to talk about that today. But what I will say though, is that when you have that much instantaneous power, a little bit extra weight is actually beneficial to the acceleration of said vehicle. Now, while we're actually on the topic of Hellcats, uh, the Hellcat that I reviewed, which if you haven't already, definitely be sure to check that out on top of the video right now. But Hellcats are actually a perfect example. So technically they make 707 brake horsepower from factory, but on the actual like infotainment system of Hellcats, they actually show you the exact amount of power output. Like it's basically like an instantaneous, like ele electric dyno, I guess, that's connected to the car's ECU. And pretty much what RPM you're at, it'll actually show you how much power you're making at that exact second. And a lot of Hellcat or 392 owners can uh, vouch for me 
and that thing basically 99% of the time it does not reach you know 700 horsepower and a lot of times or practically every single time that's what you face or that's the difficulty that you face in an internal combustion engine vehicle because whatever that book you know number is for horsepower that official number that manufacturers you know try to sell their cars with you're never making that much power if it's an internal combustion engine vehicle now if you have a modified car and you've ran it on a dyno multiple times and you know exactly what it makes to the wheels that's a different story but as far as brake horsepower is concerned you're simply never going to see that power put to actual real world use and put you know through the wheels for what i was talking about before with all the mechanical laws that takes place in the average drivetrain of an internal combustion engine vehicle so that is pretty much just going to wrap it up for today's video i hope this video was at least a little bit informative and this video is also kind of geared towards some of the elementary car enthusiasts or people that just aren't really into cars that are wondering why evs accelerate so damn fast and I know we went over some very basic concepts in this video, so let me know down in the comments below if you guys have any other questions or if you have any other video ideas and kind of science videos that you'd want me to actually go ahead and break down and explain to you guys how to, you know different things or mechanics or in, in this case, electronics of vehicles actually work. But like always, thank you guys so much for the continued support and I'll see you in the next one.